Hello, and welcome back to Quantitative Reasoning Online. Lesson Plan FB6, Lesson 14B Preview Assignment. So with no further waiting, let's look at 14B. 14B, taking aim at bias. Woo. Because we're trying to uh, keep it down to, to a dull roar. So let's take a look at it. And as always, we resize the image. Okay. A very limited objective. Determine the type of bias present in statistical studies. Okay. And we have we've, we've shown two two bias two bias so far. Sampling bias. Essentially, taking too big a sample, too small a sample. Oops, I'm sorry, that bias error. And then bias. Mostly as a methodology or, or equipment being used. So we have sampling error and biases so far. So what else it may be? So, in the next class, you will learn more about bias in a statistical study. Remember that bias occurs when some flaw in design or implementation of the study results in tendency for measurements to be too high or too low. The tutorial for the preview of Lesson 14, Part B, Taking Aim at Bias, begins here. Again, bias occurs when some flaw in design, how, how you how you how you going to um, do it, and then how you implement it. Doing means implementation, all that good stuff. Okay. So we consider three important sources of bias: non-response bias, selection bias, and response or measurement bias. Record the following vocabulary about types of biases in your statistical dictionary. So if you haven't got your book out, put me on pause and get your little note, handy dandy notebook out. And write down this. A non-response bias occurs when many sample members fail to give information for some statistic. Non-response bias. Sample member fail to give information for some statistic. Uh, non-response bias is you're sending out a lot of surveys and sent out 5,000 surveys asking whatever, but only 752 are returned. So that'd be a, that'd be like a that would be a non-response bias. We sent out all these surveys. Um, hoping a lot of data, when two people returned it, and in that case, um, it's usually because they had some feeling towards the, what the what the survey was. If you didn't care, you just tossed it. If you were got something you're passionate about and you responded, well, there you go. Now response bias. Selection bias occurs when some group, so, okay, so non-response, non selection bias occurs when some group of population members are more likely to be selected than others. Selection, selection bias can occur in many ways. For example, sometimes researchers only gather members who are conveniently available. Now they're in your classroom, in your family, on your block on your Facebook friends list. And other time, researchers gather volunteers a self-selecting sample. In each case, the data will include selection bias. Okay. Researchers gather, researcher gather volunteers. Again, I ask, I ask volunteers to do, to do the study. You may not get a good representative sample of the population with volunteers. So, self-selecting sample, convenience sample. 
and response bias. Or measurement bias occurs when the method of gathering data influences the observations themselves. This type of bias can occur because of bad measuring devices or researchers somehow influence the responses that they are observing. So bad measuring devices, somehow the researcher influ influences. Maybe he holds his thumb on the scale. These are three biases, non-response, selection, and, re and the opposite of non-response, response bias. Okay, so let's review the prompt. In the following problem, you consider we consider data gathering methods that may introduce bias. Okay, it should be noted that there this, that it is not the researcher's job to influence data in an observational study. <clears throat> uh, customer service department of a high tech retailer asked people who call for help to stay on the phone to answer questions in a brief survey. Only about 30% of calls agreed to participate. What would be the effect on the data that are gathered? Okay. So, customer service department, uh, every time you, you, a lot of times you go online, you get, hey, you're going to do a survey at the end of this your phone call. Well, only 30% of calls agree to participate. So, let's see. Would there be no effect? The people who agree to participate may take stronger feelings than those who don't bother to take the survey and may introduce bias. The data will be more reliable because the customer service department is only taking information from people who really care about giving feedback. That kind of sounds like a, a bias also of some, of some way. Okay. Either way, um, looks like B is is the, is the answer. Because think about it. I mean, you look at the reviews of of products, and you get people who either really really like it or don't like it. So it's not, and a lot of times, not a whole lot in between. So B. Yeah, definitely not more reliable. Okay, customer service department of a high tech retailer survey surveys customer business service counter at their store. What? Survey customers who visit the service counter at their store. What is the effect on the data that are gathered? One, no effect. Two, this information will help give a good quality information because people are already at the counter and are speaking to customer service employees. Many people will not be represented by this data gathering method. People who do not need customer service may feel differently than those who do. Hmm. The customer service department of a high tech retail survey comp customers, surveys customers who visit the service counter at their store. So the question is, what about those who don't? Hmm. No effect. Method will help give you quality information. Many people will not be represented. I don't know, I'm only, I'm, I'm only heavy towards three. I think you're going to be under your your staff is going to be underrepresented by in some population, so I'm going to go with three. Wrong button. C. I guess that's the same as three. I think both that an E E C three. Uh, many C three P O. Hey, oh, that's what, 
Double E's. Many people will not be represented by this data gathering method. People who do not need customer service may feel differently than those who do. Alrighty. Ooh, another scenario. Uh, customer service employees stand outside the store and interview every 20th person who leaves the store. They begin by saying, our customer service is constantly rated as the highest in the industry. Please let us know how you feel about our service. What is the effect on the data that are gathered? Okay, so he's, out, so he's looking at people who's, who's going in and out of the store, or leaving the store, and he's doing every 20th person. Okay, so he's not, so that, that's a random, sort of, it's a random selection method. So what's the effect of data? No effect. Uh, the first thing about how highly rated their customer service is may influence the response. Hmm. It is important to remind people how others feel about an issue so that they feel more confident in their own opinion. All right. Here, you're trying to influence. You're trying to influence. They begin by saying, our customer service is constantly rated as the highest in the country. Leading question. Yeah, that it's a good it's a good sampling technique, but the question they used to do the survey with was a bad one. So the question is you're trying to put a you're trying to impose a bias into the into the uh, outcome. So it would be like I said. So the first thing about how highly rated their customer service may influence the response to the question. Definitely. Uh, think about something you would like to know about students at your community college or the people at your workplace. Uh, create a statistical research study that would introduce bias in the sampling method. Be prepared to sh share your scenario in class. Well, uh, being an online class, that's not really um, practical. So. Think about it yourself. I, this is for your own personal um, response. Something you want to do, something you like to have looked at in, in the either at your the school here or your workplace, and think of a, of a research study. Surveys are the quickest and easiest, but do figure a way that would introduce bias in the sampling method. Our sampling method is, is convenience, um, volunteer, uh, he's back here somewhere. Yeah, now I'm response, a selection, a selection bias by convenience or a self-selecting sample. Give it a thought. All right, let's see. How confident are you that you can determine the type of bias presence in a statistical study? I was going to sort of somewhat for that one. And yes, yes, indeedy. So that's the end of the interactive tutorial. Go back through it again on your own. Get your date, the point for it. Think about that last question. Think about a, uh, a study or a on some question we, we want to have answered at your workplace or the school here, and think of a way to introduce a, a bias into it. And with that, I shall see you shortly for. Questions one through four of Quantitative Reasoning Online, Lesson 14b, More Biases.